edition. Good morning, I'm Lauren Osborne. Today is Sunday, July 3rd. Let's check in with meteorologist Arden Gregory for a look at your forecast this morning. Well, this weekend's been nice for, for Fourth of July festivities, but tomorrow's not going to be so great. You're right. We lucked out this weekend. We've stayed mostly dry, and today we do have more rain chances in the forecast, but they look fairly hit or miss. Tomorrow is a different story. Not that great of a forecast for Fourth of July, but as far as this morning is concerned, we're already seeing some rain on pinpoint Doppler as we scan the skies for you. See just a few showers beginning to work their way in from the north and west, just now working their way into Estill, Powell, Lee, and Wolf County, and then just an isolated shower or two over in Pulaski County as well. As we go through the morning hours, we'll continue to see that spotty shower activity, but we don't expect it to be widespread. Temperature wise starting out fairly mild this morning temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 60s London the warm spot at 70 degrees this morning Prestonsburg and Paintsville the cool spots at 65 and everyone else falling somewhere in between. So if you're headed out the door this morning we are off to a fairly mild start and aside from those few locations that we just saw on the radar there most of us are dry but a spotty shower or two will remain possible as we go through the rest of your morning hours especially in locations further north. Later on this afternoon, we keep that isolated rain chance in the forecast as temperatures top out in the low to mid 80s, but better rain chances arrive to the forecast for your Independence Day, and I'll have the details on that a little later. And thank you so much. One of the nation's largest private coal producers may soon take on one of the largest layoffs in history. Murray Energy Corporation told workers they may lay off as many as 4,000 400 people. Sabera Rayford talks to industry leaders about the impact. Murray Energy is the largest privately owned coal miner in the U.S. and now they're warning that big cuts are ahead. I talked to the president of the Kentucky Coal Association, Bill Bissett, and he says this is just the beginning. Kentucky is a coal mining state that produces steam coal, electricity generating coal, and if we're not creating electricity with it, there's nowhere to go and that's why people lose their jobs. Murray Energy is threatened to cut over 4,000 jobs, which is close to 80% of its workforce. For every one job lost, we lose at least three other indirect jobs for every coal miner that loses his job. So it's a serious concern for eastern Kentucky, but that concern has grown now. Now we see in western Kentucky, which is where Murray Energy's operations are located in Kentucky, they're now talking about layoffs. Other countries have had layoffs. The price of coal has declined over the years, and business says companies are laying off employees to catch up with the market. We're eventually going to have a production that meets our market. Uh, production is going to come offline, less coal is going to get mined, less people are going to be employed. We will be mining coal in Kentucky. Uh, probably the best we can hope for is to hang on to what we have right now, but the truth of it is as those coal-fired power plants are retired and new ones are not being built, we will only continue to contract. And that's the reality of it for until things change either politically or they see our product in a different light. The law requires a 60 day waiting period before a large layoff can occur. In Lexington, Sabir Rayford, WKYT. The past few days have been full of news about jobs here in eastern Kentucky. Here's a recap. Thursday, we told you about Alpha Natural Resources mining operations that will shut down, causing several positions to be cut in Letcher and Knott counties. It's unknown how many because company officials will not comment. Also this week, a deal struck with the France Popsicle Stick Making Company will help provide 90 jobs in Corbin. Officials say the initial investment is around $15 million. In Mingo County, West Virginia, deputies say a small child drowned yesterday morning. We're told it happened in the Newtown area. Officials say the child was just 22 months old. Not many details have been released, but you can stay updated on WYMT.com or on our news app. We're learning more about a deadly crash that happened yesterday in Perry County. Sheriff's deputies say they responded to a single car crash around 1.30 yesterday afternoon off Kentucky Highway 28 in the Buckhorn community. Officials say the driver, 43-year-old Jeffrey McDonald of London, failed to turn and left the road. McDonald died. His passenger, 40-year-old Terry Smith, also of London, was flown to a nearby hospital. Deputies say they do believe alcohol played a role in the crash. 
And in Pulaski County, Somerset police say a woman has died from injuries. She suffered during a crash Friday night. Police say 68 year old Patricia Shaden was riding in her wheelchair at the intersection of US 27 and Langdon Street when she was hit by an SUV. She was taken to a nearby hospital where the coroner said she died. Police are not sure if she accidentally entered the roadway or was trying to cross US 27. The driver, an 18 year old man, was not injured. Emergency officials say the body of a flooding victim has been recovered in Greenbrier County, West Virginia, bringing the number of those killed to 21, with two people still missing. Here's video from last Thursday's historic flooding. According to a statement released by the emergency management director, the body will be taken to the state medical examiner for an autopsy. The victim was not identified. Officials say the two still missing in Greenbrier County are presumed dead. West Virginia state road officials have estimated the flooding caused about $36 million in damages to roadways in 18 counties. This past week, the Phelps Fire Department lost one of its founding members. Ronnie Vaughn helped start the, the Phelps Volunteer Fire Department. He died on Thursday. WYMT's Chandler Markey spoke to current firefighters about Vaughn's legacy. There'll never be another Ronnie Vaughn. On Thursday, the Phelps Fire Department lost one of their own. 78-year-old former fire chief Ronnie Vaughn died after enduring prolonged health issues. Ronnie was one of the founding members of the Phelps Volunteer Fire Department from 1960. Um, he served as chief for 12 years of the 55. He was on the department before his retirement last year. Now firefighters are left with the memories of their former chief, mentor, and friend. And he was a big inspiration to me as the way he was determined to go out and help. I know I, I'm, I'm going to be seeing a lot. The department dedicated one of their fire engines purchased in 2005 to Ronnie for his dedication to the fire department. He was one that helped us start upgrading a lot of the far trucks as, as he was in as chief. As they say goodbye to a man that dedicated much of his life to saving others. I'm, I'm speechless. I mean, it's, it's just hard right now to even comprehend the loss not only to the department and his family but to the community as a whole. Firefighters say Vaughn stepped down from the fire department last year due to health reasons. In Pike County, Chandler Markey, WYMT Mountain News. Funeral services for Vaughn are today at 1 o'clock at the Church of God in Jesus name in Phelps. An Eastern Kentucky cardiologist allegedly performed unnecessary heart procedures and billed the government for them. A federal grand jury charged Dr. Anis Chalhoub for implanting pacemakers into patients without sufficient need or justification. The me medical fraud charges carry a sentence of up to 10 years in prison if convicted. The indictment states all of this happened between 2007 and 2011. Federal prosecutors say it is related to a scheme for which another cardiologist, Dr. Sandish Patel, was sentenced to two and a half years in prison in 2013. The Courier Journal reports both doctors practiced at St. Joseph London Hospital, which is 20, in, which in 2014 paid 16 and a half million dollars to settle allegations of a false billing scheme at the facility. Chalhoub has argued the treatments were appropriate. A Knott County man is behind bars after Kentucky State Police say he shot another man. The shooting happened on Friday afternoon near Frankie Jane Drive in Pippa Passes. Police say 35-year-old Brandy Sloan shot 46-year-old James Pratt during a disagreement that involved several people. Emergency officials flew Pratt to Pikeville Medical Center where we're told that un he underwent surgery. State police arrested Sloan and charged him with possession of a handgun by a convicted felon. We're told further charges are pending. A judge in Louisville has dismissed a lawsuit filed by Governor Matt Bevin's administration seeking to find Planned Parenthood for performing abortions at its Louisville facility. Judge Mitch Perry ruled on Thursday that Planned Parenthood had been given approval to perform abortions at its new facility from state regulators under Kentucky's former governor. According to the Associated Press, Perry ruled the facility was not violating any laws. The lawsuit was filed in February by the State Cabinet for Health and Family Services. It accused Planned Parenthood of illegally performing 23 abortions in December and January and sought nearly $700,000 in fines. The state could appeal the ruling. A spokeswoman for Bevin's office did not reply to a message seeking comment Friday. 
Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Hillary Clinton is interviewed by the FBI just four weeks before she's set to be formally nominated as a Democratic presidential nominee. And ahead in sports, Tyson Gay makes one and last run for the Olympics. We'll check in to see how he did in his 100-meter qualifying heat. And a few hit or miss showers and storms are possible today, but we could see some strong to severe storms tomorrow. Stay with us. I'll break it all down for you when we come back.